Oh, hello, like the bit of paper says. Um, I wanted a new toy to test. So this is a 5G uh, ready SIM with 3's new router. 5G router with uh, model number MC801A and the SIM pack over there. Mainly interested in seeing what speeds I can get. Not where I am now because I do not have 5G coverage. Mm. But this will be incredibly useful in places where uh, I need emergency internet. which happens regularly thanks to landlines getting uh, squished and especially recently with the storms in the UK it would have been very useful to have one of these spare and if the place that I'm using it as an emergency has 5G coverage then yippee uh, so I'm from a three customer service point of view I'm not expecting uh, phenomenal speeds in most of the places that I might use it because there isn't a lot of 5G coverage near where I am. Let's see what they give you. That's what the device looks like and there's the manual. If you need to read this just pause the video. It's going to whiz through this. That's quite useful, what all of the uh, buttons and other things do. Sockets as well, and what the lights mean. And how to insert the SIM. So that's everything I've just been through of that. Got some conformity thing, and then the manufacturer's manual rather than threes manual. Interesting that the manufacturer's manual has cable broadband mode uh, using it rather than um, through the 5G or 4G using it through uh, an Ethernet based connection and also whether the firmware exposes this function, it looks like it can be a phone, possibly for the SIM which goes into it, or let's hope that they've built in a SIP client, which is unlikely, a VoIP client, but one can hope. Far more details on the um, lights and what they mean. Okay, so there's no dial tone and it goes on about having signal, um, so I presume that's uh, passing through the phone service from the SIM, whether the 3 service supports that, I don't know, but let's see if I can test that later. Oh, RF exposure. Uh, device should be installed and operated with a minimum distance of 20 centimeters and your body. Fairly good advice, especially if it's on all of the time. Please do not touch the antenna area on your device. Okay, actual thing itself, the exciting bit. There it is. On the front we've got two unlabeled lights. Um, which, let me have a quick look at the manual and see whether those are supposed to have labels on, which uh, three maybe don't take advantage of. Number one is the... Oh, okay, no, it's the signal lights. So those 
indicate signal. Maybe it would be more obvious if this was switched on and the colours of the lights would make, uh, make it more obvious. Let's find out. Network light, Wi-Fi light, power light. Three branding. Got a air vent at the top. And vents at the bottom. On the back of it you have WPS button. Oh, an external antenna. Attachment holes. That's good. I don't know what the name of those connectors is. If I look it up and I find it out, or if somebody comments, um, I'll put that in the description of the video. An RJ11 phone port for plugging in an analog phone or a decked cordless phone. LAN port number one, and lowest down, LAN port number two. And below that, the power. On the underside of the device, a bit of junk. We have 12 volts, 1.5 amp rating. Over on the right hand side here, you've got the IMEI number, the serial number, the SSID, and the hard coded uh, or initial default wireless details password. Default IP address of 192.168.0.1, and it also has a uh, default random password for the admin page. Underneath this bit of plastic, interestingly, a USB C port. I have to play about and see what I can uh, find with that. SIM card slot, and uh, three have provided it with the SIM already uh, in place, and an absolutely minuscule reset hole. I think a uh, whoop that doesn't balance very well. I think a paperclip's going to struggle to fit into that. So here's one standard paperclip that I use for all of my videos, and indeed that doesn't actually fit into that reset hole. So if you're going to reset it, you're going to need something more like the uh, eject tool from an iPhone or a, uh, a similar device. So actually I think that's the iPhone one there. This one's probably, I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, let's try this other one. Yeah, that one does just about work. So yeah, standard paper clips, probably a little bit too large to press that reset button. Then there's this unknown gap that disappears into the device there. Not sure why that's there. Let's see what else is around. This is probably going to be the power supply. And indeed it is. We've got here a ZTE branded 12 volts, 1.5 amps, which matches the rating of the router itself. And, kindly, a network cable, which I don't need for the moment. One router. There is the power. And That's now plugged into the mains. Let's see what the lights do. So the power light is on solid white initially. And it looks like it does take longer than I would hope to, to boot up and be ready. There we go, network's gone red. Which, red really doesn't show very well on um, on this camera, on this phone. So I've put it into shadow, you can see it there. Network light has gone red. And that's quite a deep red to my eyes, but is, a, is an orange on the video. Wi-Fi light has gone uh, solid white. And just looking at the underside of the router, it doesn't have a QR code to connect to wireless. Um, my phone, for some reason, doesn't support WPS, which is the, um, the button that you can press often on the back of routers or the front of routers to connect stuff. Um, so it would be quite convenient if it did have a QR code for the wireless. Okay, network has now gone blue. 
and we now have one bar of signal. The other thing this doesn't come with is a card with the wireless details on it, which is going to make it um, a little bit annoying to type in the password on my phone because I've got to turn the router upside down and say if you're in a marginal signal area uh, and you have to pick up the router and move it from its ideal location to see the password, it's just a little bit annoying. Time to connect to that wireless network. I am now connected and that was a speed test I did earlier somewhere else so ignore that. Let's just see if I can focus down onto it. Let's start this test again. Well, that's quicker than I was expecting. I was expecting more like 14 megabits per second, uh, which I'm pretty sure is what I got on a telephone uh, in this same office when I last had a 3 SIM. So 48 down and uh, 3 megabit up could be better. Uh, almost certainly this will only be operating in uh, 4G mode, not 5G. The mast is a minimum of probably a mile and a half away. Uh, and we're in a brick building um, and there will be no direct line of sight to the mast because around me are other buildings and houses um, which will be blocking the direct view of the mast. So I'm actually pretty impressed with that. And here's a quick addendum to this video. So you saw I only got about 45 megabits per second uh, where I was testing it in my brick-built office with uh, many miles to the nearest mast and no line of sight. I then took it in my car to a place where there's a new three, uh, what they call the Pole of Wonder, the 5G mast. I was parked only about uh, 50 metres from that mast and did a speed test. And you can see in one of the tests I got 987 megabits per second down and 141 megabits per second upload. And using the Ookla speed test app, I managed 973 megabits per second down and 137 megabits per second upload, during which time the ping does rise. So you might want some sort of QoS if you had this as a permanent setup and uh, high pings were going to be an issue for you. Bearing in mind this speed test is probably limited by the Ethernet port on the router being one gigabit per second and certainly on the laptop that I had to test with that was also a one gigabit per second Ethernet port. Taking the SIM out and trying it in my phone I managed 1063 megabits per second down and 128 megabits per second up. So it's quite unusual to me that mobile data is managing more than a one gigabit ethernet connection can manage. So it's quite an astonishing speed and I really hope that all the 5G networks and 5G masts manage this speed and when everyone is using it can also maintain that speed and it doesn't become a congested bog and, uh, and horrible during peak times and rush hour and other stuff like that. Uh, hopefully this information is interesting as well. Back to the original video. So there'll be some other videos linked to in the description which you might be interested in. There will be a video about how to factory reset this router if you've forgotten its password or its settings or somebody's changed the settings and you, you can't get into it anymore. And there'll also be a comprehensive video about the web admin interface of this router showing uh, every page of the admin interface. So if you're trying to support somebody who has this router uh, or if you want to see what uh, functions the router has before you get it, uh, that video will probably be quite useful. Hopefully this one's been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notification switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.